Well, I'm sitting in a brand new Tesla Model 3 with only 12 kilometers on the odometer um, because I've been on the wait list for three years and I've been in this car for about five minutes. Uh, I haven't even driven it yet, but I'm just so excited. Uh, and I'm gonna tell you all the things that I've been thinking about this car in terms of how it relates to space and astronomy. Is this an excuse to just do a video that's somehow loosely tied to the astronomy focus on my channel? Yes, of course, but I cannot not talk about this car right now. So I'm going to give you the Australian Astronomer's Guide to the Tesla Model 3. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. So before I go any further, I'd like to shout out Bintel. I've been working for a couple of weeks now to revamp their website. And it's basically the same website that I built before, but cleaner and just nicer and the user experience is just so much better. So we're really excited to have launched that. If you're in Australia and you're an astronomer, or even if you're into bird watching and digiscoping and that sort of stuff, uh, Bintel are my one-stop shop. So do be sure to check out www.bintel.com.au and if you walk into the store, ask for John and tell them I sent you. All right, so I've got this Tesla first batch in Australia. The first thing we have to do when we test a new car in Australia is see exactly how much beer we can fit in the boot. What beer do you reckon we should try and uh, fit in the boot in the front? Well, seeing that uh, we're here in Byron Bay, uh, Stone and Wood Pacific Ale would be the logical choice. Let's get to it. But wait, there's more. All right, so we've successfully confirmed that you can fit 17 cases of beer and two six packs in the Tesla Model 3. Thank you very much, Jules. Just for the gag, like I'll, I'll come back. So I'll just go around the corner. Yeah. So why Tesla? There's a number of things about this car that strike me as really relevant to astronomers. And it's not just the fact that SpaceX and Tesla are owned by the same guy or run by the same guy, Elon Musk, who I still have issues with because of the Starlink thing. Uh, and you should see that video, the Starlink shit show. But they do share employees. Tesla and SpaceX help each other out. And the engineering that SpaceX uses does find its way into the Tesla. A good example of that is the hex crumple zone. You can see the hexagon shape in the front of the car and that's no accident that's not just to look cool that's a shape and form factor that's used in rocket engineering and space technology as well as other industries as well but turns out it's good for the crumple zone now i've got my map here set to mars and there are lots of little spacex easter eggs in the car like this you probably know if you do have your car in mars mode and you look at the car information uh, <laughs> you get the interplanetary transport system from SpaceX, which is pretty cool. Of course, my car is named Carina after my favorite region of space and an obvious car pun. But this is just so I don't accidentally dox myself, so I live on Mars. So something else that ties the Tesla series to space and space travel is that the new Tesla Roadster, the un unreleased one, uh, actually has three G's of force. That number's familiar, it's because it's the same number that the astronauts on board the space shuttle experience. Again, it's something to do with the cross-pollination between Tesla and SpaceX, and I believe they have some sort of oxygen uh, propulsion system that helps create that. So essentially, it's a rocket car. But of course, the obvious question is, this is a big battery. It's essentially a big battery or a big computer on wheels. And the battery thing is great. You know, you've got all of this energy stored in the car. Surely we should be able to use that as astronomers to power our gear, especially when we're out in the field. Unfortunately, it's not that simple. And connecting an inverter to a car like this, um, it can be done, but not without some electronic wizardry. And it's not recommended. So unfortunately, you can't use the Tesla as a battery for your portable astronomy rig, which is a shame. 
it does actually have two batteries. It's got the main battery, which weighs like a ton, um, underneath the whole car, but then it has a 12 volt battery that charges off of that. So all the other stuff, the computer, the fan, the AC, the electronics, uh, all run off that 12 volt battery, much like a normal car. And funny enough, if that 12 volt battery goes dead, it does need a jump start. So again, you don't really want to be uh, clipping your gear onto that either. At the end of the day, it's probably best just to use the car to bring your own battery and lug that as you normally would. However, there is a cigarette lighter in the Tesla Model 3, which strikes me as a huge anachronism. Um, I, for one, would not want to be smoking in this car. Hidden away, there is actually a cigarette adapter. So you can run your 12 volt gear, which might be a small telescope, but not the computer that you're using for your astronomy rig. Um, now I know Tesla will be hoping in future to bring out a pickup truck. If they do, the pickup truck will certainly have more facility, I think. Um, we saw Simone Gertz actually made the truckler and she did the electronic wizardry to put a PowerPoint on that thing, which is a great idea. And I think that would have huge utility for not just astronomers, but anyone who needs a bit of power and would like to use that big battery reserve. Now, of course, the other thing that was important for me, at least, was um, I'm used to just driving around in the dark looking for places to take Milky Way photos. And in this car, you're silent. So I've always been worried about driving around, especially back roads and you're near other people's farm properties and things like that. The noise that an ice car makes is uh, just quite obnoxious. So with this, you're actually sort of creeping around. And if you had the lights off, um, no one would know you were there, apart from the sound of the tyres on the, the gravel or whatever. So if you're wondering what the Tesla sounds like, this is what it sounds like when it's off. Just joking, this is actually on. Uh, but what does it sound like if we really give it some? Uh, so it's a really quiet, stealthy car. And I think that's an understated point about what's so nice about these cars. The silence is actually wonderful. Of course, the other thing that astronomers will enjoy is that massive glass roof. It is beautiful to look through, especially seeing our own star right up above you. Uh, of course, that generates a bit more heat in the cabin, and it's pretty well tinted. In fact, as an experiment, when I went out to do some night photography, uh, I tried to see if I could get the Milky Way through, and it was a real letdown. I really couldn't. Now, that may be because there was condensation that night, but I did see some stars, and I think it was more just the tint is so heavy to protect you from our star, uh, that we're just not going to get a full glorious Milky Way through this particular roof. But I do like the challenge and I can see the sky through this so I might come back to that one. But does the Tesla Model 3 actually have the space that you need as an astronomer? Uh, we have a lot of gear, especially if you're going to a star party and you're camping. Um, it does have a fair bit of space in the boot, as we discovered with the uh, beer experiment. However, I think if you were going for a full weekend camping and you wanted to take your tent and everything, it is a bit of a tight fit. This is more of a sedan model, the Model 3, uh, so I would probably wait for the Model Y, or if you have money to burn, uh, obviously the Model X would be amazing. You could fit more than enough gear in that car. That said, this has a lot of room. If you don't mind putting the seats down, you're not taking passengers, uh, there is a hell of a lot of room, in fact more than you'd need. So of course I went out to take a photo of the Milky Way stretched in the background of this car. I went out with my friend Lee from Accidental Photography. Thank you Lee for coming with me and uh, it's always good to have an astronomy buddy when you're out in the dark. We set ourselves this challenge to see how much reflection we could get of the Milky Way in the car roof and the bonnet. And I think we did alright.
fun shoot and uh, I learned a few things that are specific to cars, especially with the lighting, you want to light under the car, there's certain angles which work better and this was a really good car to shoot from the front bumper, it just has a really pretty curvature about it. Anyway, I've got some really great videos coming up for you. I have been under the pump with work and uni and stuff so I apologise it's not as fast as it used to be but uh, there is some more stuff coming. But in the meantime, remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.